Hey everybody, welcome back to my Star Wars channel. My name is David and this is how to play Star Wars Jabba's Palace. We would be honored if you would join us. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for being here doing another game review today. This is Star Wars Jabba's Palace. This is a love letter game from Z-Man Games. Uh, comes in that cool plastic box right there and uh, ripping it open. Of course, you're gonna get this nice little drawstring bag. Let's pull everything out and look inside and let's teach you how to play. All right, so inside the packaging, you're gonna get this little drawstring bag and the original Love Letter uh, game comes in a drawstring bag as well. And of course, you get a nice graphic of Jabba's Palace and everything you need to play the game is inside here. So the first thing you'll get is an instruction book and you'll want to hold on to this because uh, inside you may want to refer to the description, the write-up they have for each individual card. They give you a little bit more information than the reference card does. And speaking of the reference card, uh, you'll get six. You've got six reference cards and it's gonna list what every card does, both for the Jedi faction and the palace faction. So bad guys on this side, good guys on that side. And one of the cool things is, not only will each player get one of these, but uh, when you go out, okay, so which would be another way of saying, you know, you're not playing this round anymore. You, let's say you've died, okay? You take your reference card and flip it upside down like this, and it shows that your character has fallen into the Sarlacc pit. So it gives you that nice uh, Boba Fett perspective. <laughs> another reason to hold on to your little booklet, there's a little chart in here that'll tell you how the game is won. So these are the numbers of players at the top. So if you're playing a two player game, one person needs six victory tokens. If you're playing a three player game, then that person needs five victory tokens. We play with four. So in a four player game, you need four victory tokens and so on. You are also gonna get four agenda cards and you will only play with one per game. So a uh, winner is first person to score four, okay, four. And that means within one game. So let's say you start with Exalted One, which um, I would recommend, the game recommends. And the goal of this is highest number in hand wins the round. So the highest card in your hand, person who has the highest card, they win the round. And you would leave this card out as the goal for the entire game, okay? When it's time to play a new game, maybe you'll want to select Rescue Mission. This says the most Jedi play area wins the round. Then uh, you could go on to Jabba's Court. This says the highest sum of palace cards in play area wins the round. My kind of scum, highest number of palace and Jedi in hand both win the round. And uh, you'll have a lot of fun with your friends picking a uh, agenda to play for your turn. And speaking of winning, you'll get victory tokens. So let's say you score on a particular round, you'll get a victory token to uh, keep track of that. So uh, that will determine who wins the game at the end. And then your draw pile is gonna be 19 of these character cards. There's Lando, there's a Gamorrean guard, C-3PO, Luke Skywalker, Salacious Crumb, uh, Han Solo in Carbonite, Bib Fortuna, uh, Boba Fett, Let's see if I missed one. There's Chewbacca, there's a Mercenary, uh, R2-D2, and the Rancor, Leia, and there should be one more. Yep, Jabba the Hutt. All right, so now that we know what everything is, let's set up a quick uh, three-player game just so you can see kind of basically how this works. Uh, we're gonna move all the scoring tokens off to the side and we're gonna shuffle up our draw pile. We have our goal, right? Everybody knows that the goal here is highest number in your hand wins the round. And that's with a single card, by the way. One single card left in your hand, highest number of the people who are left uh, wins. And then everyone's gonna get one of these reference cards. All right, so everyone's got a reference card. The tokens are within reach of everyone. We've got our goal out and our draw deck is shuffled. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take one card off of the draw deck and place it off to the side out of play area. Why do you do that? Well, because now there's one card missing from the game 
and nobody knows what that one card is. So there won't always be a game with, uh, let's say, Jabba the Hutt in it, or there won't always be a game with Han Solo in it. it could, this card could be anything. The only person who will ever know what this card is uh, will be the person who draws the R2-D2 card. The R2-D2 card will allow a person to look at this, but it's just a way to eliminate one secret mystery card from the game. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to deal one card to every player. Now for just our example, I have the cards face up, but in truth they would be face down, and this is how uh, people would start the game. They would have their card, they would be holding it in their hand as reference, and nobody else should see the card that's in your hand. And so starting from your first player, uh, you'll go around and take turns. And so really, there's only uh, two things you're going to do on your turn. And the first thing is you're going to draw a card. All right, so the second card that I drew is the Mercenary. And as you can see up in the corner, the Mercenary is worth three, Boba Fett is worth five. And so if the goal here uh, in this round is to be the person that has the highest card, then it would be to my benefit to keep Boba Fett and to play the Mercenary. You're going to always keep one and play one. So I'm going to enact the Mercenary's text, which says choose another player and secretly compare hands. Whoever has the lower number is out. So I'm going to compare hands with this person over here. And so I'll secretly show them my five, and this person will secretly show me their one. And since mine is higher, this person is immediately, immediately out, which means they are no longer playing. I bumped this person out right at the beginning of the game before they even drew a single card. That's how the game is played. That's it. That is the whole game. You're going to draw a card, figure out which card you want to keep, as long as it's going to help you with your goal. You're going to play one card, play its text, and keep one card in your hand. And slowly but surely, you'll start to knock the other players out. So let's say it was the end of the game. I have five. I'm going to look across to this person to see what they had. And they had a three. And so between five and three, I have the highest. And so I'm going to take one of these. And that scores for this one round. Of course, following that, you're going to reshuffle the draw pile using everybody's cards, right? And then you're going to play a second round using the same exact goal, right? You're going to use the same exact goal card. And in a game of three people, we said that you had to score five tokens. And so uh, you're going to play that many rounds until one person has five tokens and that person will be the winner. One last thing, as you're playing cards down to your play area, you want to make sure that you're always leaving the cards face up and visible for everyone to see. You don't want to stack them on top of each other because part of the uh, strategy of this game is knowing which cards have already been played because you're trying to also guess what card each person is holding. And so if you look back at the reference card, you'll see that the reference card tells you how many cards there are of each character type. So for instance, Luke Skywalker, right? It just has the one listed, but Salacious Crumb, if you look over here on the side, it says times two. That means there's two of these in the deck. Boba Fett, look over here on the side, it says times two. So you know there's two Boba Fetts in the deck, which means if you're looking around the table at other people's play area and you already see two Boba Fetts, then you know that nobody else has that in their hand. All right, hopefully that gets you going. That gets you off and running so that you can start playing this really fun game. Games don't take that long, uh, maybe 20, 25 minutes or so. And if you have any questions at all about rules or gameplay or just Star Wars in general, uh, you can go ahead and comment down below. I love comments and I'll respond when I can. Thanks guys, may the force be with you. I'll see you next time, bye.